Hey guys, Sean Alexander, Apex Pressure Cleaning. I wanted to bring you a video today about uh, 12 volt soft wash pumps. Um, sometimes these things get a bad rap, uh, you know, about not lasting very long. The longevity of the thing is, uh, you know, is always questioned. Uh, you know, performance obviously isn't as good as gas anymore, but uh, they are still a pretty robust uh, way of soft washing. So I just want to bring you, let's call it a tail of two pumps here. This is a Delavan 7 gallon a minute, 100 PSI pump. And this is one of the Everflow 5.5 GPM 60 PSI pumps. And the odd thing about these two pumps is they are both used and they both went into service on a generation two soft wash system around the same time this year. This pump was sold to a customer along with a three quarter inch manifold on a generation two soft wash system back in May. It was uh, like May 16th, if I remember correctly. And then this pump was also used and was sold to a customer down in Alabama and it went into service in June, the middle of June. So these are both used pumps. When I, you know, we take uh, obviously customer service calls, the phone number's on the website and I get customers that call me and some of the things that uh, they say or some of the common issues are, my pump stopped working, what happened? And we do a lot of diagnosing on the, you know, over the phone and, um, you know, I tell them how to, you know, how to do a couple things and, um, you know, a lot of times I can get them, uh, you know, get them going again with a couple simple tricks. Um, this customer, for instance, and I'm, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, bash this customer in any way, but he said, and he even admitted he's not very electrically inclined and he's not very mechanically inclined. So what I did is I just said, fine, I'm going to send you a brand new pump. I took care of the customer, sent him a pump. I said, please send me the other one back because I think I know what's wrong with it. And it's a pretty easy fix. This one, um, same thing. Customer said, I was using it. The pump stopped working. What's wrong with it? Okay, well, you know, we went over a couple things and, uh, and we couldn't get the pump to work. So again, I took care of the customer. I sent him a new pump. I told him, please send the pump back to me because I want to look at it and see what has gone wrong with it. Now, as you can see, the condition of these pumps are drastically different. Remember, this Everflow pump went into service in May of this year, and this Delavan pump went into service in June. So really close. This one went down to Alabama. This one went to Pennsylvania. So just going over the condition, I want to, you know, I want to point out a couple things. The customer that bought the Everflow pump is using his system in the back of a truck bed. And unfortunately, he does not have any indoor storage for his system or, uh, you know, obviously his soft wash stuff in the back of his truck bed. So it sits out in the weather 24 hours a day. It's in the rain, it's in the, you know, the wind, the snow, the sun, all that stuff. Now, obviously it hasn't snowed since May in uh, Pennsylvania, but you can see the difference in condition in this pump. So also on the flip side of that same coin, this customer uh, has indoor storage for their equipment. This one has to happen to become happened to come from uh, a customer with an enclosed trailer. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of difference in condition just from environmental impacts. Now, this customer also, you know, and you know, he admitted this is his stuff. He can do it as he wants. Also does not rinse the pump very frequently. And if we get down here and look inside the pump, you can see all the corrosion in there. Now I scraped a lot of that out back when I was trying to get it going, but you know, there's a there's a lot of crap in there. Doesn't get rinsed out very often. And he said, you know, Sean, listen, I don't have time to do this. I do a lot of jobs. 
Um, I just use them until they stop working and I get another one. So if you look under here, you know, it's pretty corroded. So this one on the flip side gets, gets rinsed out, gets cleaned up. I mean, things pretty clean in there. You know, I don't see anything in there. Um, compared to the other one, now I know this fitting's kind of in the way, but, you know, just look at the condition of the pump compared to that guy. So, what I want to do today is I want to go over, uh, these two pumps and what fails on them. And we'll start with, we'll start with the Delavan because it's fairly easy. So these are both 12 volt pumps. They're both on demand, meaning there is a pressure switch. This pressure switch here on the bottom of the pump reads, let's call it reads, the pressure in the line. And once it hits 100 PSI, which is what this one's rated at, this pressure switch will shut the pump motor off. So if you are using this thing and you let go of the trigger on your gun or close the ball valve on your wand, pressure will build up in the line, in the hose, until it hits 100 PSI, and then the pump will shut off. And that's because the pressure switch will do that. Now, the Everflow also has a pressure switch. It's here, and this one's rated at 60 PSI, and when the... You're using it, you uh, shut the, the ball valve on your wand or let go of the trigger on your gun. The pressure switch here will determine when it hits 60 PSI and then shut the pump off. That's why it's called an on-demand pump. Um, so that's one of the common failure points of a 12-volt pump. And the way you can really determine when the pressure switch fails on a 12 volt pump is that when you let go of the trigger or close the ball valve on your wand, the pump continues to run and it will continue to run building up pressure until it blows the line off of something, whether it's the whip line between your pump and the uh, hose reel if you're using one or, you know, off the gun or blows the, um, uh, the hose off uh, altogether, or if the hose is pretty strong and all your connections are pretty good, it'll eventually pop either the relay or the electrical in some way. So that's really one of the failure points on these pump is the pressure switch. Now, we sell on our website the pressure switch for these Delavan pumps. It's fairly easy to, um, to replace. There are four screws. There are two right there. And then there are two on the bottom down here. Let me move that wire. There are two on the bottom right there. Two, um, so four total screws. And then there are two wire connectors right there. Best thing to do is obviously um, take a picture of where the wires go before you go and try to replace one of these pressure switches. Now, this little screw here is an adjustment. Both of these pumps have it. There's one here as well. It's a little corroded, but it's there. So those adjustments, there it's a fine adjustment to the pressure switch. Um, Cody Yarbrough from Southeast Softwash put out a really good video on how to adjust these. Um, and every time I get a customer that is concerned about their pump being out of adjustment, I always just send them a link to Cody's video because it's really good and it's doesn't make me or it doesn't do me any good to make another one because that one's just as good and I can just send them a link to it. So that's uh, that's what you get with the pressure switches. Now, uh, the other failure point and the reason why this pump failed is that the relay right here went bad. So these relays are very common. We also sell the relay on our website. But you can get them locally. You can get them at any auto parts store. As long as you take this relay in with you, they will uh, be able to match it up fairly quickly. They're usually about $10 or $11. I think we sell them for $11 on the website. It is held on by that screw. You take the screw off. The relay comes undone once you remove, and I'm not sure I can do this on camera, but once you removed 
the wiring harness. Now, this wiring harness is just a, it's a common plug. It just plugs into that. Now, people have asked me why I use the Delavan over the, um, over the Remco, and we use both. When I can't get Delavan pumps, I usually get a Remco pump to replace them. But the reason I like the Delavan is that the um, pressure switch and the relay are far easier to replace on the Delavan than they are on the Remco. The Remco is just a pain in the butt to try to replace these uh, these two items. So now that um, now that I got this pump back, I looked it over, I replaced the relay, the pump works just fine. Everything's good to go on it. And to be honest with you, this pump will be available for sale. It's actually on the website. It's a used pump, so I got it at half the price. It's at 159 bucks uh, plus shipping. It's ready to go. If you want one as a spare, um, obviously I can't offer any kind of warranty with it because it is a used pump, but it does come with the wiring and it'll come just the way you see it with the um, connector. Uh, the the uh, garden hose connector here, uh, ready to bolt up to either our control panel or a Gen 2. Or if you don't have one of our systems, but you can make it work with your setup, this is a pump for you. If you want to, you know, get a 7 gallon a minute, 100 PSI pump fairly inexpensively. Now let's talk about this guy. Um, Everflow pumps. These things uh, have gotten a, a wrap, I guess, in the past um whether it's good or bad the new ones you'll see a lot of them are come with this gray pump head now you know these things have been dancing all over the country when it comes to being made places this one is assembled in mexico but like one of the last ones i got was back to china and it's just the weirdest thing these things are just going everywhere whether they're made in china whether they're made in mexico so this one also has a, pump or a pressure switch. They are replaceable. We do not sell these pressure switches, but Amazon has them and they're fairly inexpensive. Again, two wires going to the pressure switch. So before you would replace the pressure switch, you want to make sure you know which one of these wires go to which terminal. So obviously taking a picture of them is the way to go. Now, instead of a relay, this one has a fuse. Now, this is just a 20 amp uh, ATC mini blade style fuse it's in line so a lot of times when customers will call me and say hey my pump stopped working what's wrong with it well chances are it's probably the uh the fuse keep fuses with you when it comes to this guy you might want to keep a relay with you now relay and, and you know i know there's electricians out there don't quote me on this or you know and take this as gospel but a relay for a lay person is essentially a resettable fuse it will reset a couple times three four five times before the relay goes bad so there's not a replaceable fuse but there is a replaceable relay that acts like a fuse now, this one does not have a relay, but it does have a fuse. So this one doesn't reset at all. So once it pops, it pops, and you got to replace it. So it's always nice to keep a couple of those on hand. Um, a lot of times what you'll find uh, with the fuses is that if, like, let's say, the customer is leaving uh, midway through the job and they run over your soft wash hose while you're running the thing and it gets a pressure spike, and a lot of times it'll pop that fuse. Uh, also, if it gets a leak in it, the fluid will leak down and corrode these terminals and that will cause the uh, the fuse to pop because it has a lot of resistance in the wiring now when it comes to wiring you can see i've cut this one apart now what the reason i've cut this apart is because i'm going to do a little experiment with you and and go over what these uh pumps are really made of so we actually have two pieces to this pump really you have the pump motor itself which is this guy here and then the pump head which is here. Same thing here, pump head down here, and then the pump motor. Now, I'm gonna put this pump together, or this uh, the wiring together, and I'm gonna plug it in. I have a 12 volt battery over here with a couple jump leads on it. I'm gonna plug this thing in, and I'll show you that the um, pump itself does not work. Okay, so I'm gonna set this down here for you, and uh, you'll see me kind of plug this together. I'm gonna try not to touch these leads because they are open. And I'm gonna plug it in. And you'll notice it does absolutely nothing. So I got it connected back up. I just got a couple spade terminals there. And then I got it connected to the battery. 
and you can see it does absolutely nothing. Now, that is because it is running through all of the factory electronics, whether it's running through the fuse, which is brand new, I just replaced it, the pressure switch, and all of the pump head issues, okay? All this stuff down here, it's running through the factory wiring. So, I'm going to go ahead and put you back down, like so, and I'm going to unplug this. And now I'm going to jump just the pump motor itself to the battery and you'll see that the pump will actually fire. It'll actually turn on and run. Now, because this pump was not taken care of quite as well as the, uh, the Delavan pump, all right, now watch this. Listen to how grindy that thing is. Okay, so it works. But it sounds like it's grinding up some rocks in there. Um, so essentially what I did is I just took the positive and negative of the pump itself, not the pump head wiring harness, okay, not the pressure switch wiring harness, but just the, just the pump itself, the wiring harness, and if I jump that to 12 volts, you can hear that the pump will run. But what it's doing is there's a shaft in this pump and it's turning all the internals of the pump head. Well, the pump head in this case is bad. Now, you can buy replacement pump heads for these Everflow pumps. Again, you can find them on Amazon. You'll replace it. Let me unplug this real quick. You'll replace it using these screws here. There are uh, six of each, I believe. Six long ones and six short ones. And there's a couple gaskets in between. So you can replace this pump head and chances are it will still work. Now, is that worth doing to take the chance to replace the pump head to see if the uh, pump works? Yes and no. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, that's something that you, the end user, is going to have to uh, determine. But so I just wanted to give you the kind of ins and outs. I know this video is getting kind of long, so we'll shut it off pretty quick. But I just wanted to give you the ins and outs of what these pumps are and how you can um, how can, how you can troubleshoot them in a couple of the replacement pieces on these pumps. I think they get a bad rap. They do a good job for what they are. No, they don't have the performance of the gas stuff anymore, but uh, they are pretty pretty bulletproof, short of a couple issues. But Again, this 7-gallon-a-minute Delavan is available on our website. It is under the Used Equipment and Services section, and I will link it below. So if you want to get yourself a uh, fairly inexpensive, let's call it half-price 7-gallon-a-minute 100 PSI Delavan pump as a spare or an upgrade, uh, I have one. This one is ready to go. All right, guys, we'll see you.